Hi guys, and thanks again for joining me here at Shea Rob. So, what are we talking about today? We are talking about who's the greatest. Now, just that sentence itself to me is is honestly is is crazy. But let's look into it. You know, let's see what everybody thinks. Maybe straight off the bat, you want to start writing some drummers' names down below in the comments to say, "Oh, so and so's the greatest," and so on and so forth. You know. Um, so where are we going with this? So, firstly, I think we would need to have some sort of context to all, all of this. You know, there's one thing. It's like when we have our favourite football teams or our favourite movies or whatever. You know, we're willing to, you know with friends over a drink, fight, not literally fight, but you know, verbally put our cases forward and say, this is why they're the greatest. And then we could do that. And then sometimes we hear something coming back at us from them, which makes us think, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. For instance, you could say, and a lot of people do, Buddy Rich was the greatest drummer in the world ever. And you can think, okay, well, certainly in the big band world, he pretty much wrote the book. But again, that could be open, it's subjective. Um, but, you know, how did he get on when he played with rock bands in the studio, for instance? And you could say, well, what do you mean? And you could say, well, you know, like Steve Gadd, someone like that has done stuff with all different kinds of styles of music. And that could make him the greatest drummer in the world, not just specialising in one place. Um, and that could make you think, oh, yeah, that's a good point. And this could be the same with saying um, Taylor Hawkins was the greatest drummer in the world. You know, when was the last time you saw Taylor play a jazz gig or something? But then you could say, well, it doesn't matter if he doesn't play jazz. He's the greatest rock drummer in the world. And then someone comes in and says, what about John Bonham? What about him? And someone says, well, prog rock is rock. How about Neil Peart? <laughs> and it's endless. Um, and, uh, I, and I think it's brilliant because it keeps the conversation f flowing uh, and keeps it going round and keeps forums buzzing and so on and so forth. I personally think it's a little bit of everything, you know. Um, I've been lucky enough to see Buddy Rich play twice uh, in 84 and 86, just before he died. And uh, it was amazing both times and I'll never forget it. Um, and certainly the way he moved that band and he played those solos and his... Just the air he shifted in the room was phenomenal, whether it was on brushes or, or sticks. Incredible, you know. But I've also p seen the likes of Peter Erskine, um, Dave Weckl, you know, uh, Ian Pace. I could list loads of drummers now. but And they equally blew me away. Um, but as I grew as a musician, I realised that just saying one cat, as they say, uh, is the greatest out of them all. And this, you know, you could put this over any instrument. Um, is kind of like narrowing your fields down a little bit. You know, when I was younger, I probably did say uh, certain drummers were the, the greatest. And, um, you know, and obviously you've really felt it. And there's, there's a period in your life, like when you try to set your drums up the same as your favourite drummer. Well, all that's important. It's kind of phases you, you go through. But I think when you play music uh, and you take it on as a profession, certainly, you know, you start to see things in a different way. And I think I've mentioned once before that sometimes you're in the studio and somebody might mention a, a, a musician or a band or a drummer that, you know, you've, you're not really into, but they want you to reference it. And part of you is like, oh God, I can't stand this guy or this band or whatever. But, you know, they play you the track and say, could you give us a little bit of this kind of flavour? And you think, oh, actually, it's not that bad after all. <laughs> I quite enjoyed it. And then sometimes I've actually come home from sessions and then the next day bought either on vinyl or whatever or downloaded an album by that artist or band and realised that I was probably cutting my nose off to spite my face in the early days of saying I didn't like them. So, you know, I think it's important to have your personal favourites and, and know why that is, but also be really open to other drummers, other styles, and other opinions. It's really important. You know, the buddy one is one that I've had with loads of people, you know, and I think where I am in my life now, I can stand back and say, look, this, this, and this is why I love him. I know he couldn't do this, that, and the other, or I'm not saying he couldn't, but he never went down that avenue, but that's fine, and it's great. Now let's talk about so-and-so, you know, and I think that's the 
for me, that's the only way I can kind of handle that situation. Because at dinner parties or whatever, people will always say, who's the greatest drummer? You know, you've got to say that it's Neil Pearl. You've got to say that it's Dave Grohl or, or Ringo Starr or Charlie Watts, whatever, whatever period we're going to, John Bonham and, you know. And it's like, well, they're all great. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a kind of straight down the line answer and maybe middle of the road answer. But I believe that is true. Certain days I want to hear Mick Fleetwood play and certain days in the studio I'll be referencing Mick Fleetwood's drumming. But then the next day I could be listening to Thomas Lang and looking at some of his fastenatos and things like that, which I could never be able to play, but I want to study them for a bit and I'm into that. And then the next day Rob just wants to hear, you know, um, Paul Motian or Paul Motion playing brushes with Bill Evans. That's where I want to be. And the next day could be Billy Cobham and the next day and so on and so on. And every time you see one of these things, you'll see the records change, you know, behind me. Um, so, it, it, you know, it shows that my I'm not focused in just one place particularly, you know. I'm interested in all of it. So, you know, the next time you're thinking who's the greatest, just maybe broaden that question out a little bit further, you know, because every drummer, every musician, every band, every style of music has got something to offer. And um, I can certainly say that I'm a bastion of, of taking in as many of the influences as you can. Still loving who you love, but not being afraid to take on all these other names and styles, as I say, and so on, because it'll only make you a better player. It might also open you up a little bit to thinking, ooh, you know, maybe I don't need to say who's the greatest anymore because, hey, they're all great, man. But, you know, it, in seriousness, it does make you, you think very differently. And the same with bands. You could put that to bands, people that say their favourite band is the greatest band in the world and, and so on. And um, the Guinness Book of Records say one thing and what you think could be another. And then a documentary on TV could say another. You know, and it comes down to personal taste. Some facts we can't deny, you know. Um... Buddy was an extremely fast drummer. The Beatles have sold probably the most records in the world. You know, does that make them the best? No. You know, but as an argument of standing up for one of those two artists, you know, it, it does stand. You can't change facts. But things aren't as black and white as that, you know, um, which I think I've said a few times in these kind of chats that I do about drum kits or artists or albums. You know, everything is subjective. And the more open-minded you could be, I think, you know, it makes you a better human being and it certainly makes you a better musician because you're more open to ideas. And some of those ideas can lead you to work with other bands, work with um, other session musicians and just open doors that you weren't quite ready for because you never know what's going to come tomorrow. The phone or the, it might go or the email might suddenly ping and then there's a, a chance to go off and gig somewhere doing something rather that you thought, nah, I'm not really into that. But then you look at, where you're going, maybe look at the finance situation and think, blimey, <clears throat> I think I'd better take that on. You know, that could look after me for the next six months. And all of a sudden you're in that situation, meet those people who like what you do and they say, hey, I just don't do this. I also play in this sort of band or I go and do this. Can I have your number? And then all of a sudden you think, blimey, I've, out of one chance of me going, I'll do it, yes. I've suddenly got all these other offshoots of opportunities and so on, which is good for my career, it's good for me as a musician financially, and it just makes sense. So, who is greatest, who is the best? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, is this, am I being too middle of the road with this, or do you think that's quite a fair assumption? Tell me what you think. Leave some comments down below, send me some messages, emails, you know how to get hold of me, all the details are somewhere on this link on this video somewhere on the home page. So thanks for tuning in guys, have a good day, enjoy drumming, enjoy music, and I shall speak to you soon.